start off by colouring some of the FMM clay using just Distress Ink to get a nice yellow colour. So what I've actually used in this instance is the mustard seed to colour the white clay. So simply just um, get some white clay and just dab it onto the surface of the pad and that will easily colour the clay for you. Then just knead it in your fingers just to get the colour going throughout the clay. And then what you need to do is just grab some of that and roll it into a ball okay, of about two centimetres wide. Now if you have a glass mat like I have underneath here, two centimetres is basically two of the larger squares. Okay, so just place that over there. That's a little bit on the large side. So just take that out. It is quite important to get near enough the right sort of size. Okay, and then just roll that again into a nice ball just keep on placing it over there and we're near enough at that size. So let's just bring our non-stick mat back in and then once you get to that you need to take a piece of florist wire, the, the thicker gauge florist wire and then just using a tool just bend that over the top to make a hook like so and then get the clay ball and then just poke that down one end and then just pop it all the way through and then just pull that. Where it's actually gone through just go back round with your fingers just to seal the wire actually in and then just go round with your fingers just to make sure it's near enough like a ball shape. Okay and then just leave that overnight or for a couple of hours just dependent you'll, you'll easily be able to tell if the the clay's soft because as soon as you start to press the ball if it is still um, wet then the clay will just squash so just make sure that you've left that long enough so the ball is completely dry so leave that in an upright position so I have a little holder that I tend to use something like this but if you've got a block of wood with some holes in that's going to do exactly the same job so leave that to dry overnight Using the Distress Inks I have coloured some of the FMM clay and then it's a case of just rolling that out to about one millimetre thick. So just using a nylon rolling pin just start to roll that out. Like I say about one millimetre thick. Keep on lifting the clay every so often and then just rolling it out okay, in all directions to get that nice consistency the thickness okay so again just pop that round like so and again just lift it up every so often okay so once you have your clay at the thickness that you require you're going to need one of these which is the dahlia cutter from FMM Sugarcraft. So they come in three sizes and this is an entire set. So first of all you're going to need the smallest of the cutters okay and you're going to require two of these shapes. So just go in there and just press okay pop that up and then if the clay sticks into the cutter then quite easily just push your finger in the center just a tap and you've got your first one out so just pop that onto a mat and then we need a second identical size shape there. So again just pull that up and just pop your finger in the center and you have two. So for all of the clay that's not in use straight away then just pop that back into an airtight bag and that's going to be good to go possibly for the next three weeks as long as it's um, airtight. So now you have your two shapes cut out of the clay, it's now just time to thin them out a little bit. So you're going to be using a ball tool, so this is one from FMM, and then just go around either side of the petal and then lift it up every so often just to make sure it doesn't stick to the mat. Or you can see what I'm doing here, I'm actually keeping my finger under one of the petals so I can easily lift it up every time around. So you're just going to want to thin every single one of those petals around the outside. Okay, and you'll see that every time I do that it's just stretching the clay a little bit more as well as actually thinning it out. So just go around on every single one of those petals. Okay, 
and get it nice and thin. So what I'm actually doing here, I'm actually rolling the ball tool. I'm not dragging it, I'm rolling it. And that is giving us a nice even thickness then to the clay piece and all of those petals. Okay, so once you've done one, just make sure they're near enough or the same um, length. So this one here, I can see is just a little bit shorter. Okay, doesn't matter if they're not absolutely identical, but as long as they're in the same sort of region, doesn't matter about all the shapes being different either. So I'm just going to pop that one aside. And I'm just going to bring our second one into play. And again, just go around in exactly the same way as we did before. Okay, so now we have our two shapes. Now what you need to do is just get yourself a pair of scissors and for each one of those petals, you just want to cut each one in half. So just use your scissors to just cut in there and you don't want to go really any further than the original shape that actually has been cut into the clay with these cuts. So like I say, just make sure that your actual cut doesn't go any further down towards the center what we have there is adequate for what we want. Okay, so let's just go all the way around. Now, because the clay is fairly wet at the moment, you just got to be a little bit careful that each one of those petals where we've actually cut it doesn't then stick back to itself. So you can see what I'm doing, I'm actually holding the shape in the middle there, not on the outer part where the petals are. Okay, so that is one shape already cut and then just grab your second one and do the identical process there by just trimming those down a little bit. Then once you've trimmed them all, my tip here is just to pop them aside, okay, for about five minutes, okay. And then what that is going to do, the clay is just going to dry and it's going to be a little bit easier to use on the next part of the process. So after about five minutes, these have just dried a little bit and should be a little bit easier to actually work with. So just bringing back our original clay ball that is on our florist wire there, we're going to start wrapping that shape with these ones here. So what you need to do is just grab one of them and just find roughly where the center point is, which in this case is about there, and then just pop that like so. Now, if the clay is still damp, that will stick to the dry clay. If you find it's not sticking, then just get yourself one of these, which is a water brush, or just add some water onto the, the tip of a brush, and that will then act like a glue. But in this case, it looks as though it's tacky enough to stick to itself. So just very, very carefully, just go round. So don't go for every individual petal here. Just go randomly as it stands at the moment and just apply them in a haphazard type of way. Okay, so I'm just slightly stretching the clay to start with and then just confirming that by just pressing it down a little bit onto that ball. So just go around, like I say, randomly and you'll see that at the moment the petals are absolutely everywhere. So what you're wanting to do is just stretch them and just pull them to what is the center point at the top there. Like I say, no particular order whatsoever. The more random the better. So just keep on going around and then just picking one and sticking that. And this is forming the very center of your dahlia. Okay, so just stretch, pull around like so. Okay, so do that with all of them until you have a nice coverage on that original clay ball that we started with. Okay, so a little stretch and then just confirm that down. So that's the sort of look, so you can see, it looks like all the petals are like 
wrapped around that centre bud. So now take your second shape and do exactly the same. Again, find the centre which is roughly there. Just pop that through and again just stretch those round and just press them down. Cross them over as long as they're all coming like towards the top of the bud then that will be perfect so there we go that is the middle of the dahlia so once you've got to that state then just leave that for a couple of hours just to dry the reason being that if you start to build up the rest of the dahlia around the ball you will find that you're going to be pressing on the top part of this and that will flatten all of the detail that you've already put in there. So just pop that aside for a couple of hours and then come back to a little bit later and if the outer part of the clay has sort of like hardened a little bit then you can go on to the next process of making your dahlia. So the next part in making the dahlia is to use the three cutters. So you're going to be wanting two of each size actually cut out in the clay. What I tend to do is um, mix the clay and you'll notice here I have a dark shade and a lighter shade as well. So for the small one I'm going to use the dark shade, for the large one I'm going to use the lighter shade and then what's left over from the darker shade and what's left over from the lighter shade I'm going to mix those together so there's going to be a colour sort of in between there and then I'm going to use that for the medium size. So let's get cutting. So using the darkest colour there, just use your nylon rolling pin on the non-stick mat and just roll that one out. Okay, just keep on lifting it and thinning it out as you go. Okay, so you're after about anything from one millimetre thick or thinner and that is going to work perfectly. So once you're happy with the thickness, then just place that on the non-stick mat and cut two of that shape out. Okay, so that is one. Okay, just pop that out just by pressing in the middle there. And then you want a second shape as well. So the clay that we have left over, just pop that inside an airtight bag again. Okay, so pop that back into there for the moment and just seal that up and then working with the shapes you need one of the firm foam former mats okay from FMM and let's just pick this one up so just place them like so then using the round end of your rolling pin just simply go from about this point of the petal and move outwards okay which is going to then elongate and also thin out the petals so just keep on going round with that okay once you get to halfway which we are there then just lift up the shape this is just so it doesn't stick to the the mat that we're working on and then just continue with the others like so. Okay, so all the way around and then once again just lift that one up and then just place that aside for the moment, bring the other one and then do exactly the same to that. So this is the same sort of method you're going to want to do for all um, the sizes of the different cutters in the clay. So again just lift that up, pop it round, and then go back in there and just flatten out each one of those petals like so. Right, so once you've got to that stage there, again, just going to pop that one aside and bring back in the other one to start with. This one's now slightly drier to work with. So place that in the middle of your, your pad that you're working on. Then we're going to use the veining tool. 
Now what I tend to do is go from the middle outwards, okay? So we're just drawing a line halfway through the petal, okay? So don't drag it too much, otherwise you will split the clay. And if you do that, it doesn't matter, then just roll the clay back up and start again. So I'm just going to go on every single petal. Again, just lift that up every so often, just so it's not going to stick to the firm foam for a mat. So just go all the way around like so. So on every single petal, you just want to make that indentation using the veining tool. Now you can just leave it at that, but for this particular one, what we're going to do, we're just going to hold the shape in the middle like so, but then on the very, very tip of every single petal, we're just going to go in there and we're just going to pinch it, okay, just like, just like that. So it's just going to give a little bit of a different shape. So again, just go in, just simply pinch it. Because the clay is still wet, that's going to stick to itself and it's going to give every single petal a nice different type of shape. So it's up to you. You can either leave the petals as is or you can do like I'm doing here and that's just going in there and just pinching the very, very tip of each of those petals. So we're going to do that with the other identical size one and then also to the other two shapes as well. In between, what you need to do is just pop them inside a plastic box, okay, like so just so the clay doesn't actually dry in between. So just pop the lid on and then you're going to be good to go. So again we're just going to take the second shape and again using our veining tool again from the centre outwards, centre outwards and just repeat the exact same process as you did with the first one. Don't worry too much about going right into the centre because you're never actually going to see that so as long as it's near enough from the center point outwards that's going to be fine and then take that using a knife tool that's what i always do just to enable you to lift that up again just holding the shape from the middle there so you don't squash anything then just go around and just pinch the end of each individual petal there just to give it that unique shape okay so keep on just going all the way around, like so. So as you can see, what I'm doing, I'm just collecting up the petal, and then once it's in that shape, I'm just squeezing the very end. Okay. There we go. And again, just pop that inside your box, just so it doesn't dry out too much. Okay. So there's the first two layers of the flower. The next one we are going to go is the larger shape. So let's just pop that one out there. So the larger shape is going to be the lightest of the colours. So let's just grab this out of the bag. Okay. So we're going to want two of this shape as well. Okay, and again, just pop the dark clay just inside there, just so it keeps nice and fresh in between each step of the process to making the flowers. So as I said, we're going to be using the largest now of the three cutters. Okay.
correctly and like I say this is all the more reason not to mix up the the third or the mid color tone of the purple in this case just in case things do go slightly wrong on this stage then you can always just scrumple this up and you have some more clay as well to play with okay so that is that shape done as well okay and again just pop that inside your box so take the lid off and we're just going to pop that one inside there as well okay make sure that none of the clay pieces actually lay on top of each other because you may find that they stick together so now with the two clays that you have we're going to mix those together to sort of like make a mid color between the two so we've got the dark we've got the light and if we mix them up together we're going to sort of like get a mid-tone color as well so just simply just mix those together and you can see quite quickly quite easily you're going to get your third color your mid-tone color and that's the way I actually do it so the darkest color is in the middle of the flower and then the further out it gets the petals get lighter but if you want every single um, shape that you actually make can be a slightly different shade entirely up to you so just keep on mixing that until you have a continuous color without any marbling from either the dark or the light and that's how quick and easy it is to actually do okay so once you've got to that again just pop that aside and then we're going to use our rolling pin again okay and then we're going to go for the middle size cutter this time which is this one so we've used a small we've used larger now it's the turn of the medium so again just roll that one out lift it turn it again about one millimeter or thinner so we're going to want two shapes out of this so there's always a case you're, you're going to have some clay left probably but it can always just be popped inside the bag and it's going to be good to go again don't worry if it splits like it has there so I'm just going to peel that one off I'm just going to tear that away I'm just going to cut the one shape out of there okay about there just press that all the way around and then just lift that up tap the clay out just pop that on our foam foam format just pop that aside and again we're just going to roll this clay out here just so there's enough to get our second shape cut out okay pop the cutter on and then just press that firmly all the way around again the clay okay just pop that back inside of the bag and as long as the bag is really really airtight then the clay is going to last between three and four weeks in there okay there we go so let's pop the other shape out now pop that aside bring in our firm foam format and exactly as we did before we're just going to roll out from this point outwards to elongate those petals okay So once you have all of those done again just pop that back inside of your box for the moment we keep the lid off this now so I'm just going to place this aside on my bench just so I can grab them easy we are going to be using the dryer from FM as well because 
the flour will need to be dried upside down okay once you've actually assembled everything so taking the the center part that's now dried uh, for a couple of hours we can now start to actually build our dahlia so what we need to do is use the smallest shape okay so this is the darkest one and again just pop the wire right through the very center of the shape you can almost tell where that is now because of all of the score lines that we placed in and then turn that over and then just very very carefully just start to confirm that around the ball shape okay so what you need to do is don't press any higher than where that cut line is there okay if you do that then everything is going to stick together and you don't want that to happen so just keep on going around don't do it all in one go so now I'm turning the flower whilst I'm pressing down okay then just turn it around you can see that's the sort of effect we're going to get which is pretty pretty okay so now I'm just going to use my little tool here to holding the flower midway so just have a look at it and maybe as this one has done some of the clay has actually started to, to part so again just go round so from this side and just press that clay a little bit higher up like I say just don't go beyond the point of where the cutter actually is okay <coughs> You may need a little bit of water as well at this point, just depends how dry the clay is. So pop that aside. So we're now going to go for the second shape, okay, of the same size. And what we need to do now is bring our flower back in. And where the space is just here, okay, just here, we're going to want to put a petal there. So again, find the centre part, pop the wire through there, and then line it up so it's just there so can you see what I mean there and then just press that down again do it evenly don't try it in one go just press that round and you can see we'll get flip this over in a minute just keep on moving your finger around turning the ball shape in your hand okay and then just turn it over just to have a look that's the sort of effect we're going to be getting okay with this one here there's a slight twist so I'm just going to now just straighten that one out a little bit okay so we have that at the moment so it's looking pretty nice now is the time to manipulate all those petals whilst the clay is still dry so I am just going to go in there and I'm just going to press from this side Okay, like I say, we do dry this flower upside down. So just go in there and just press that whilst the clay is still damp. It's a lot easier to stick to itself when it is damp and to other parts of the, the clay that make up the flower. Okay, so that's the flower so far. So again, pop that inside our little hole, and you can see that I'm quite um, cautious about how to hold that flower from underneath don't squish all of the petals so this is the now the middle size shape so this is the the mid color okay so we're going to bring that flower back in and then just pop that into the center again where there's a gap then that's where you want the outer petals again just turn that over and just very very carefully just start to press and confirm all of those petals in place as well okay so just go all the way around boom, boom, boom. like so just twist it round maybe you just want to adjust a couple of those little petals like so and then again pop that there back in our holder get the second one of the same size this is the mid color and the middle one and then again pop that in the center and again find the gap in between and then once you have just twist that over and again just press that clay down 
not going too high up, remember, and just to keep on going round rather than do it in one fell swoop. So that is the sort of effect we're getting now. So it's really, really now coming to into shape. Again, it's the time if you want to just manipulate some of those petals. Maybe they're not lying exactly where you want them. Like I say, it is meant to be a flower, so it's totally natural. Maybe you want to just pull them out a little bit. Okay, which again you can do now whilst the clay is wet. Okay, again, pop that back in there. Now we're going to go for the largest of the shapes, okay, which is the lightest of the colours. Pop that wire through there. Again, find that gap, tip it upside down and just using your finger, a little bit of pressure and the clay is sticking to the other clay underneath. Okay. Just go all the way around, like so. And now, again, just have a look. Okay, and that's the sort of effect that we're going to get. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze that petal a little bit and then just start with my fingers, just very, very gently, just push that upward. So there we go. OK, we're going to pop that back in our holder for one final time and we're going to go for the final petal shape here. So this is the largest one, lightest colour. Again, just pop that in the centre, so the florist wire in the centre of that shape. Again, find the gap which is there and then just marry up that final one. Once you're happy, then just flip it over and again just start to press all of the way around that shape. So there we go. Okay, we're near enough done. So it's always an idea to have all of your shapes already cut out, already veined, already pinched, and then it's a, a far quicker process of making the flower. So there is our dahlia with the pinched petals. And you can see how pretty is that. So just go back in with your knife tool. Say now is the time to just go in and maybe just start to manipulate some of those petals to places where you want them to be. Okay. And then again, I'm just going to slightly go around there. You don't want to press too hard because you don't want all of the the petals to actually stick to one another. Okay, so just make sure they're not. What you need to do then is grab this tool here with the, the pointy end and then just twist the wire like so just to make a little hook, okay, which is just there. And then we need to just bring in our drying flower dryer like so and we're just going to hang that over there to dry. So leave this one um, possibly overnight, possibly about five hours, just depends. You'll easily be able to tell when the clay is dry and then following morning or after about five hours time you can come and just um, colour the very tips of all the petals using the same colour that we originally coloured that clay with. So now coming back to our dahlia after it drying overnight, okay, we can have a look and see that that's all dry and all of those beautiful petals have dried perfectly. So they're still very movable, so they're good to go. Right, so let's get some colour on here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the Twisted Citron on the Distress Inks. I'm just going to dry brush onto the centre there. and. I do mean we really, really do want to, to dry brush, so it's just a, a couple of little brush strokes just on this. might not even show that much, but it's just um, adding a little bit of detail, so just a little bit of dry brushing on those. Okay, just take your time, just build the colour up, don't go 
too wild too quickly otherwise it's just going to be completely and utterly green and that's not what we want this is just like um, the centre bud so it's just a new part of the plant or the flower that is growing so it's got that little green tinge to it so I'm just going to go onto there okay so just a little bit like I said just build build up the colour so just onto there there we go just twist it around it just gets away from the starkness of just the solid yellow in the middle so I'm just dry brushing around the sides a little bit it's just picking up on the highlights or the, the high points of the clay okay so just keep on going around and then that way as well okay so that's and it is just a little tinge of the green right I'm just going to pop that aside and then we're just going to have a look now this is the actual color that we used to color the white clay from FMM and that's wilted violet um, but I'm sort of thinking that maybe I want to brush on picked raspberry instead around the edges so if you're unsure then the best thing to do is just to grab your brush and just pop that onto there and then just go onto the back okay let's have a look so that's normally where the calyx would be anyway so it's going to be covered up hmm I think mm, don't know let's have a look go for the other colour which is the wilted violet obviously that is going to go pretty pretty well let me have a look okay <coughs> yep I think I'm going to go for that one okay right so let's just pop the lid back onto there I'm just going to grab a foam brush and then we're going to go directly onto there so just pop your foam brush onto there dab that off and then just very carefully just go from the inside out making sure you don't hit that center bud when you're doing the coloring so again just build up the color just keep on going round on, on all of those so just keep on building up that color okay so that's just about one pass okay so you can see straight away the difference there so I'm going to go another pass here okay so just starting there just brush outwards so just be very careful not to touch that yellow bud in the middle so just keep on going all the way around until you're happy with the colour on the very tips of all of those petals okay I think I'm going to leave it at that actually I'm pretty happy with that so let's just have a closer look so you can see the finished result mm -hmm.